Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and today I'm in London. Uh, and as London is preparing for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and the Trooping of the Color, uh, the city is abuzz with the regiments practicing, uh, flags being flown, and the entire country preparing to celebrate this incredible milestone of the Queen. I thought it'd be fun today to check in with our good friend Tom Chamberlain, ceremonial guru whenever it comes to all things British, to learn more about exactly what the Trooping of the Color is, uh, its tailoring tradition and its significance today. So join me on another Gentleman's Day Out. So here we are at the Guards Museum. And I, I know that museums aren't necessarily all sort of where you frequent for these videos, but I thought it gives a good bit of background mm -hmm. for what we're going to be looking at. So uh, here we are. I mean, whenever it comes to ceremony, Nobody does it better than the British. Yeah. And so much of that originates from military history and tradition. That all is coming to a culmination here with Trooping of the Color. So it's a nice lesson for me that uh, you're kind of walking me through all of this. I just want to be able to show it to you. I mean, the thing is, is that if, it, you know, your ethos is, is quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. And I think that no um, institution epitomizes this better than the Guards regiments. And as you can see sort of around you, there's a lot of uh, sort of key pieces of uniforms, some of which are extremely iconic, so the bearskins, for example. Mm -hmm. And as you see behind you, with the sort of dramatic reenactment of, mm -hmm. of battle, you can see that these were fighting uniforms at one point, yeah. obviously no longer. So why do the guards exist? Well, um, they refer to themselves as, uh, or at least the Grenadier Guards, as twice the man. What that means is that they have a, currently have a green, uh, job and a red job. So the green job is obviously modern day soldiering in mm -hmm. the field and stuff, but the red job is about the, the ceremonial guards to the queen mm -hmm. or, or, the, or, or the monarch. And that is a special uh, duty that they have as guards regiments. And so each of these regiments have been uh, sort of, um, uh, they, they've, they've been around for different amounts of time. So the oldest is the Grenadier Guards. And so they are referred to as the senior infantry regiment in the British Army as a result. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are all distinguished in different ways. So obviously they have their cap badges and you have the Grenadier Guards with the exploding grenade. And you have the Coldstream Guards with the Garter Star, the, the Thistle with the Scots Guards, the Cloverleaf with the Irish Guards, and you have the, the Leek with the Welsh Guards. Mm -hmm. All of which obviously very sort of sentimental and, and appropriate to the nation. And it's, 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 it's such a wonderful thing, I think, and I think it's great that we'll get to come here because what you see on the parade ground at Trooping the Colour is basically a, just a, a kind of a, a culmination of hundreds and hundreds of years of tradition and, and excellence and, and, and the application of excellence to soldiers mm -hmm. uh, on the ceremonial um, uh, ground. And I, and I think that people might say that ceremonial is, is, is sort of pointless for modern soldiers, but actually there's going to be a lot of people who are in the guards who would argue the opposite, and I would too. Now, how many different regiments are there of the guards? Household uh, guards? Uh, so, so there are five. Okay. So there's the, the Grenadier Guards, the, uh, the Coldstream Guards, the Scots Guards, Irish Guards, and Welsh Guards. Okay. And uh, you can actually, interestingly enough, with the uniforms, when you watch Shooping the Colour, you'll be able to differentiate who they are, not just by the cap badges, but also by the button stances. So this is an interesting kind of tailoring part of it. So you see here with the Grenadier Guards, the buttons are straight, the Coldstream Guards, it goes in twos. Okay. With the Scots Guards, it's in threes. With the Irish Guards, it's in fours. Hmm. And with the uh, Welsh Guards, it's in fives. So groupings of five, whether it's on the cuff and on the, uh, on the front of the jacket as well. So. And what's the, the origination of that? I mean, is the history of it just purely to differentiate the various regiments of the Guards? Yes, yeah, basically, I mean, that's, that, that's, that's the idea. And also you see things like on the, um, uh, on the bearskins, they have uh, different colored plumes mm -hmm. on the side. Um, and the bearskins are obviously extremely iconic, uh, but were necessary in battle. They had a practical application in battle because you might have noticed that Guards, they wear it underneath their lip. They don't mm -hmm. wear it underneath their chin. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is that in battle, with a charging horse coming at you, uh, it firstly, because it's over your eyes, it kind of puts off the perspective for anything charging. It doesn't really know what they're hitting. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they hit the bare skin, the idea is that the bare skin would just fly off and you can yeah. keep fighting. And if it was under the chin, obviously, it would probably take your whole head off. Um, so, the, you know, these are, you know, historic fighting garments, but play an obviously an iconic ceremony yeah. role today. Yeah. What about the origination of the red? I mean, does it have anything to do with just kind of the blood of battle? 
That is the uh, the urban myth, but as but it is an urban myth. It is actually just because red is sort of the most straightforward um, material to, to 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 create. I mean, the, the what it's made. Out, I mean, it's made out of wool, um, but the dye and the red is, is was the most straightforward to <laughs> um, do. So that's why it is that. It's very smart. Uh, so we're lucky that that happened to be the colour. Because like yes. if it was like, I don't Green know, or, yeah, yeah. Or orange or something, it might just be slightly different. But uh, no, red. Uh, and um, it, this is summer uh, kit though, because in the winter they, they go grey. Mm -hmm. Historically, I mean, of course, uh, the regimental guards, just like all of the regiments, of which there are more than five, in the British Army. M right. Much more than five in the British yeah. Army. And also in the Household Division, I should also add, that there are also the, uh, the mounted um, troops. So there's the... Uh, the lifeguards and the blues and royals who make up the household cavalry. Okay. And uh, part of the trooping the colour you'll see uh, is the uh, King Street Royal Horse Artillery who okay. draw um, wonderful guns that were actually shot at the Battle of the Somme. Yeah. And so they would have been tasked with really protecting the Queen, right? Yeah. So traditionally, they would have been the elite troops, and their uh, their role would to be would to have the sort of closest proximity to the either I mean, the queen or king, king, the sovereign. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> the, the monarch, um, the monarch. and uh, provide a, a sort of a, a domestic guard at the mm -hmm. royal palaces, uh, which they still do today. Yeah, fascinating. So we sort of delve a bit deeper into the museum. Yeah. And there's this over here, which okay. I'm, I'm quite pleased to show you. <laughs> because while, as I was saying, uh, us Brits and uh, your Native America are uh, great friends now, undefeatable allies, uh, twas not ever thus. And there is a belt buckle uh, from the Coldstream Guards, which was found uh, in New York City. Uh, they were sort of digging around underground, they found it. So obviously it comes from the time when us... Those tumultuous few decades. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the time we, should, we shall not speak of uh, anymore. But yeah, so obviously uh, around the 1770s, yeah. um, when uh, we were having there at There were a lot of with, occupying uh, troops the, yes, from the yeah, British uh, yeah, army. Yeah, we, we had a habit of doing Stomping around. That, so, um, uh, so, so this is from then, and, yeah. and it is now returned to the museum, um, and uh, I guess just kind of is a nice little indicator of a bit yeah. of history. Well, it's interesting. I mean, if you look back in some of these historic paintings, right, you look at the uniforms, you know, traditionally, just how, you know, how brilliant and beautiful all of the officers' uniforms were. Yeah. I mean, uh, they would have been, you know, in New York, you know, assigned to duty in a foreign war, yeah. right? But still in ceremonial uniform much of the time. And they would have been dressed in these uniforms uh, beautifully adorned. Yes, and I think that, it, you know, we, we, us Brits have a reputation of being slightly eccentric in that sort of manner, um, and we don't, you know, half measures avail us nothing. Mm. We, 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 we go full on. And, and I think that when you look at sort of the portraits around as well, you know, they, they, this is really what people wore. But also, you know, rank is obviously a very important thing in, in, in military structure. And so it's important to be able to notice who who goes up the ladder, what the pecking order and, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's why it, it's, it's more like when you get sort of up to general level and you sort of, the, you, you will see something called an aguilette, uh, which is a really smart thing. It's, it's a kind of ro it's a kind of gold braid rope mm -hmm. that is worn on the right shoulder if there's a royal appointment and on the left shoulder if it's, if it's just um, at a very specific rank or um, position within each regiment. Uh, uh, or the army as a whole. And the purpose of these was, it was supposedly because they've got spikes, gold spikes in the end. And mm -hmm. the point was is that in the old days you would charge the guns and then ram it into, mm -hmm. the, into the gun and then break it off. Mm. So the gun would be switched off and then you would ride on and uh. get more Russians or something. <laughs> and, so uh, it disabled the gun. It disabled yeah. the gun and you move on. But it was yeah. the honor of the, the, sort of the officers to be able to do that. But mm -hmm. you know, have, they have their aguilets to sort of be able to do that. But as you see here also, uh, you know the Keppel children. You know this is from the, this is from the 1700s as well. You know the, the, the traditions of the regiments go way, 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 way back. And I heard a story once of a an American um, groundsman at Harvard visited mm. um, Cambridge University, and he saw the lawns there, and he said. Uh, to the groundsman in, in Cambridge, he said, so he said, how do you get your lawns to be so amazing? And the groundsman just said, oh, it's fine. We just roll it and roll it and roll it. He goes, well, we do that too. And he goes, yeah, yeah for 400 years. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. yeah. <laughs> and I think it's fairly similar with how I think the, the regiments now, 
view themselves um, and how they refine their ceremonial codes, values, and also um, uh, excellence. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, well, if you look at the uniforms, and I, I mean, again, it's, you know, this is of course a historic uniform, yeah. right? You look at the evolution of this to where we are now, right? I mean, that's happened over hundreds of years. Yeah. And so you look at the uniforms, and they're just absolute, you know, extravagance. You know, as an American, you know, looking at just how rich they are and how detailed they are, mm -hmm. and everything that goes into them. Well, that has had 400 years yeah. to evolve, and it continues to accumulate yes. to where it is now, which is, you know, really at the highest level. Amazing. I think what's really important to note also is that. Uh, all these, this museum is large here because it carries a huge amount of tradition mm -hmm. of not only the stuff that kings and generals did, but also bravery of, of, of regular soldiers and, and young officers. Mm -hmm. And every time someone puts on the uniform, they kind yeah. of carry that soul with yes. them. And we'll talk about the color a bit later um, as an embodiment of the regiment's mm -hmm. soul. Um, uh, but in the meantime, this is interesting because this is the Duke of Wellington's uniform. Oh, wow. Uh, who obviously. A great man, mm -hmm. a great man, Duke of Wellington, wonderful man. There's a lock of his hair in there as well because we all need that. And uh, the Duke of Wellington, he, uh, there's, there's amazing things with the Duke of Wellington. He, there, there's a letter I've read from him in the Cavern Guards Club where he complains about the lack of morale and he, he attributes it to the lack of strawberry jam. <laughs> that's in there, which I which I quite agree with. Though. I think we I all mean, need more strawberry jam. If you're going to be on the battlefield, so he's, you know, he's you need your English tea, which is still standard issue. Absolutely, uh, in the art, absolutely. You know. well, the thing you had to, so he wrote back to to Parliament to say, now now look here, we need more yeah. jam. Yeah. So my, great man. My brother was a naval aviator, and oh, he, really? al he always enjoyed you know, whenever he was uh, you know kind of attached to a Royal Navy. Yeah. Uh, aircraft carrier, yeah. because they're still allowed to drink. Yes. Whereas on the American aircraft carriers, there's memory. absolutely no alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was always a little bit of a treat whenever they were attached to the the British military, because British. there were a few additional you know privileges that they were allowed to enjoy. Yeah, we still roll the dice a bit on safety. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. So so this little like thicker section is like a nice little homage, homage to you know this. He's got this beautiful pair of pumps, which is, you know, considering how s slight he was, he's, yeah. you know, it's not, as everyone was tiny, though, quite big feet. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, I, you know, his effect across the British Army, I mean, mm -hmm. there was, uh, uh, you know, the, the regiments named after him. And, you know, he's still a really revered and respected character. Yeah. And of course, that kind of touches very much on um, the household division too. Oh, yeah. hmm. And he was a part of the household division, which regiment? So. In the, well, so this one is the Colonel of the Grenadiers. Now, the Colonel of the Regiment is an interesting role because it, when you're a Colonel, a full Colonel, you're past the regimental level. So okay. that's what always because nowadays you'll find Colonels of Guards regiments mm. tend to be Royals. Okay. So he was that. So okay. as you can see with that, you can see that he was a very much respected and admired character mm. because a role that was is usually taken up by a Royal was taken mm. up by him. Yeah. Well, he was. I mean. Given Apsley House, number one London. Yeah. I mean, Good spot. you know, the, the country was very much, uh, in, uh, you know, not indebted, but they were very grateful for his service in the Battle of Waterloo. Yeah, uh, because things could have turned out quite differently for the world very had much he not so. uh, persevered yeah. Ex exactly. and triumphed. No, know? no, no, quite. Yeah. And um, you know, the Peninsula Campaign. You know, the whole, you know, the, the whole history of his his sort of service and his his kind of um, his brilliance and his tactical mind. You know, it's still a legendary thing and the army look up to it very much. Yeah. <laughs> now onward. So controversial to some, but to anyone interested in the sartorial arts, mm. a great a great legend, a great yes. man. This is Edward VIII's uh, uniform. Now, uh, I think this was actually from when he was Prince of Wales, but as you can see, what I was talking about with the Duke of Wellington, he's wearing the Colonel's uh, mm -hmm. rank uh, on his shoulders, the crown and two pips. Here are his amazing boots. It's I mean, they- Beautiful. Do, yeah. So these are actually, these are riding boots. Yes. I wonder who made them, can you see? Did it say Peel? Peel. Yeah, huh. there you go, amazing. The famous Peel. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. and oh, here are the, here are the aglets I was talking about okay. um, that you'd stuff into the guns. And, uh, and he would have been over of course, all of the regiments. Yes, I mean the thing is, it, dep it depends on the the the, the, the timing of of uh, his, his you yeah. know his growing up. Because if he was mm. Prince of Wales, he would have taken on the Welsh Guards okay. Colonelship. Because mm. that that tends to be what happens mm. when you're when you're Prince of Wales. Mm -hmm. um, but as King, yes, of course, you're Commander in Chief of the entire army. Okay. And, and but but some regiments will get the sort of special honour of having uh, their. The, the sovereign be the colonel in chief of their, mm -hmm. of, of their regiment. So, um, 
if this is when he was king, then it was the Welsh Guards who got that. Mm -hmm. But um, I believe he kind of switched and changed around. So as you can see, some of the buttons are very different. Actually, yeah, if you look closely, there's Welsh Guards. That is uh, Irish, no, that's Scots Guards. Um, Irish Guards there. So yeah, so he obviously changed the buttons a lot to, mm. uh, to, to meet the needs of the regimental, uh, the regimental life and, and the visits that he would have done because the, the, the royal family traditionally take great interest in mm -hmm. um, military uh, goings yeah. on. And, he had a lot of responsibility in that yeah. regard, ceremonially. Ceremonial. Yes, and actually, I mean, you know, the Duke of Edinburgh was well known for being somebody who would, you know, go into not just the officers' messes, but mm -hmm. to go and meet the the troops and talk okay. to them and understand what their needs were. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 I've heard plenty of stories from soldiers who who um, have had interactions with the Duke of Edinburgh because he genuinely cared. Mm. And I think it's a really important part of the the link between the sovereign uh, and the royal family and the military. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Look at this. I mean, this is what a little bit over a hundred years old. You know, yeah, just bit, about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the boots are absolutely beautiful, perfect condition, great shine. Okay, 1915. 1915. Yeah. So just a little bit over. This has uh, been such fun. Great Where treat. to next? So this is just an interesting thing I wanted to show you because uh, we've talked a lot about officers at the moment and so forth, but mm -hmm. this is the kind of hall of fame for what's referred to as the garrison sergeant major. It's a okay. kind of unique position. These guys are absolutely essential to all ceremonial duties within uh, London District. So okay. they're in charge, basically. Uh, the badge you see down here, it's called, they refer to it as Big Badge because it's, it, it's, it's, an, it's enormous. <laughs> um, but the, the tradition and the stereotype of the British Sergeant Major is alive and well, mainly because of these guys, because they're the ones who the kind of the drill mm -hmm. experts. They know absolutely everything about drill and ceremonial um, and are going to be key to this image down here, which is of Trooping the Colour. Um, they coordinate the whole thing with the Brigade Major and what's referred to as the uh, um, uh, the field officer in Brigade Waiting, which mm -hmm. is the guy who commands the actual uh, parade. but. Without the garrison sergeant majors, you're not going far. Yeah, hmm. interesting. I would say we should now go to Horse Guards Parade and check it out. Yeah, and that's where is, that's where this would that's be. That's where this is. This is where the parade will be uh, on the Jubilee. Yeah, exciting. So well, shall we? Let's do it. Well, we just barely missed them coming in, but here they are. Looking as impressive as ever. The, you know, it's a great honor to be inside Wellington Batch while this is going on, because you can see the crowds are all outside. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the lads look amazing. They're, they're yeah. marching in step, it all look pretty gleaming yeah. and really, lo really lovely to see. Yeah. It's always very, very impressive. It yeah, never gets the, old. The pageantry is absolutely incredible. Well, they train really hard for yeah. it. I mean, that's the thing, you know, this isn't, this isn't just walking. I mean, yeah. it is, you know, they do train very, very yeah. hard for it. And there's a, there's a huge amount of discipline, mm -hmm. a huge amount of teamwork involved. Yeah. And these guys do it, but then well, the amount of marching that's involved is quite extensive. I mean, yep. it's all the way down the mall, yeah. right between where we're going, the horse, uh, horse guards, yep. right? Yep. And then here, right? <laughs> and, the, and the mass bands yeah. who are tip top. And so it, what they're practicing for right now is in fact the trooping of the color at the Platinum Jubilee. Exactly, that's yeah. exactly right. And yeah. so all this practice is for the big day when the Queen will be on parade mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they'll be marching past yeah. and doing their own little dedication to the yeah. Queen herself. And the trooping of the color, I mean, is this the most important uh, kind of ceremony, uh, military kind of it's parade of the year? It's the biggest state ceremony okay. of the year, that's absolutely for sure. And um, the, it's the Queen's birthday parade. So it's been going on since the 1700s. Yeah. Um, but the actual traditions that are going to be going on that we'll talk about on Horse Guards goes back way before that. This idea of trooping a colour, you know, it's, it's, it's an odd terminology, but we will, we will be explaining it later on. But it is a very important day for the Queen and a very important uh, well, day for the country. And, and a lot of people come and watch it and yeah. stand on the mall and give a wave at the balcony. Yeah. There's a nice flyover from the Royal Air Force. Yeah, it's all a big day. I'm just sick with envy. I'm not going to be here, but uh, how great to be able to capture Sure, at least a little bit. It's a rare thing, but it's yeah. a wonderful thing. We're, we're, I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, I mean, how brilliant. Yeah. Cool. Honored.
So here we are on Horse Guards Parade. Um, from uh, for, you know, from where we stand, this is a very impressive mm -hmm. uh, parade square. Uh, and it's quite large. It's huge. Yeah. And well, there will be a lot of soldiers on it. But what's interesting is that you're seeing the back of a lot of buildings that you will have heard of. For example, okay. that is the back of 10 Downing Street. Really? Okay. Yep. Um, and so that is the back of Scotland House. And we have, you can see actually over there, there's the red flag of the mm -hmm. British Army sticking up over okay. there. Not the Royal Army, I should say. It's, it's called the British Army. British because Army. Regiments are royal. Mm -hmm. With the RAF, with the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy, the whole thing, but regiments yeah. are considered royal or mm -hmm. not. But the British Army is the British Army, so that's by the by. Um, but the MOD is there. Now, the MOD is positioned on top of Henry VIII's old Palace of Whitehall. Really? And Whitehall is the, the large street that runs across all of this. Mm -hmm. And so underneath, is still Henry VIII's wine cellar. <laughs> really? If you can get to it. <laughs> uh, next time, Tom. <laughs> next time, you're gonna get an access to the MOD. Um, so, but this is where everything will be going on. Okay. Um, but this is, this, this is in theory, a kind of a, um, in a, a British expression of its, its power mm -hmm. across the world, yeah. which, is, which is, you know, when this was built, this was mm -hmm. built in, at the height of the British Empire. Yeah. You see right up there, all the insignia of government and uh, ultimately of the crown. Mm -hmm because the government is here to represent the Crown's interests yeah. and uh, uh, are loyal to the Queen, who will obviously be the big boss yeah. on parade. Mm -hmm. And where is Buckingham Palace? So Buckingham Palace is all the way over there. Okay. So what we have is we have St. James's Park, uh, which is absolutely beautiful. I would really suggest you walking around it because uh, for me, it's one of the great royal parks. Yeah. Um, so. Buckingham Palace is straight down there, flanked by two roads. So there's the Mall, which we've spoken about, which is the sort of famous street. Mm -hmm. And then on the left hand side is Birdcage Walk, which is the one that runs alongside Wellington Barracks. Which is where we just were. Where we just were. Yeah. And that all meets at the top by Buckingham Palace and the Victoria okay. Memorial. Okay, great. And then uh, our patch is over there. So Mayfair's over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, so this is this is this is the sort of this is the kind of heavy yeah. center. This is the beating heart. So this is where trooping of the color all happens right here. Yes, exactly. So this is this is absolutely where, where it all goes. And obviously there are other parts in Buckingham Palace mm -hmm. and the Mall and stuff, but this is really where it happens. Um, but those are just three words. I do kind of need to go into detail of exactly okay. what happens uh, on the day. So here we are on Horse Guards Parade. As you can see, we have plenty of room to, to play with. <laughs> and uh, but this is be this is the site where the tro trooping the color ceremony will be. Mm -hmm. uh, I was here, very fortunately, in 2019. Okay. I was sitting up there, yeah. just beneath the plane tree. I don't suffer from hay. What have you? <laughs> yes. It was a perfect view of absolutely everything. But as you can see, the whole thing is set up for a rather grand occasion. It's mm -hmm. the most extraordinary uh, state ceremonial um, event. And uh, you're very lucky if you get a ticket to, to the Well, there's not the that Queen. many. I mean, all things considered, it's not very many seats. But also remember, every sort of military dignitary, mm -hmm. you know, it's a yeah. big foreign office operation. I obviously can imagine. Need to go yes. be quite careful with that kind of thing. So <laughs> okay. there are two things to really think about. There's mm -hmm. the, the, the why, mm -hmm. and then the kind of what, is okay. what's going to happen on the day. So in terms of the why, uh, 1748 was the first year that they held what's referred to as the, the Sovereign's Birthday Parade, mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise known as Trooping the Colour. The actual uh, sort of um, practice of trooping a colour predates that quite a bit, but in terms of actually making it a so the, 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 sort of the military uh, doffing of a cap uh, to the sovereign for their birthday, that's when it started. Mm -hmm. So uh, really what the point of Trooping the Colour is, 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 is it's about battle. So in battle, where it gets very smoky and very loud and very difficult, the colour represented a rallying point at times for the regiments and uh, mm -hmm. also it, it, and the colour being well. the flags. The colour is basically a yeah. large embroidered flag that has all the battle honours for the regiment on it. Mm -hmm. It's a very important thing nowadays. It's certainly it's not used today, but it is. It's brought with people, brought yeah. with the regiments to uh, operational theatre, so it goes outside regiment stuff, and and, and it um, has the battle honours uh, embroidered onto it. So it's mm -hmm. a very special thing. It kind of it's seen as the kind of soul of the regiment, and yeah. it's certainly. Um, Troopers and uh, guardsmen and uh, uh, officers—they're all kind of—they're all trained to, to, to hold it in very high regard and great mm -hmm. respect. So when you have the honour of trooping it in front of the Queen, that's a whole new thing. And so the point of it really is, as I say, in, in, in the midst of battle, it would be paraded through the troops, so they could all get a good look at it and mm -hmm. they can know 
what their rallying like. point looks like okay. if, if needs be. But that's obviously not, you know, that's not relevant today. Yeah. Today it's a ceremony. It's a ceremonial mm -hmm. uh, expression of the uh, household division's, uh, you know, excellence mm -hmm. in, in in drill and ceremonial, their um, discipline, their teamwork, mm -hmm. and also their respect and admiration for Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And I think there isn't going to be a more pertinent or uh, special time to display that than on the Platinum Jubilee, because I mean, that's 70 years, you've 70 it's years, it's, it's Tremendous milestone. I know, it's amazing. And the Queen's had, you know, there's a great history of the Queen with, with Jubilee Colour. She, she got shot at in the 80s by a chap, just actually, just over there, right on the corner. Yeah. She was on her horse, I believe it was Burmese. Yeah. And uh, she absolutely, she was, she was calm she, as a cucumber. She's and, a master horseman. She was absolutely amazing. She rides side saddle, uh, but she kept the horse calm, gave it a little pat, and just yeah. continued the rest of the parade. Very difficult thing yeah. to do, I think, under the circumstances, because you can understand if you're a head of state or someone yes. like Britain, you might get shot at. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so the, um, uh, the, other than that, she doesn't do on horses anymore. Yeah. She's, she's obviously just- So now the big carriage? Six. She can take it by carriage, and she gets taken over there, where she, uh, she goes right in the middle, and, and the troops, uh, march past her in uh, slow time, mm -hmm. you know, quick time, and then behind the guardsmen, you have the household cavalry, mm -hmm. and they'll be all set up on the horses behind, and also King Street Royal Horse Artillery, yeah. who will parade past, uh, mm -hmm. as I say, at a sort of uh, uh, slow time and then, and then quick time, mm. the horse version. Fascinating. Um, so they slow down to parade past the Queen, and then. Yeah, the style of marching. So, so uh, slow marching is uh, a just just one type of marching. It's 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 much more elegant. Mm -hmm. It's much more controlled. It's mm -hmm. just using the legs, not using the arms. Mm -hmm. uh, quick marching is it probably the kind yeah. of archetypal marching yeah. that you will know about. Mm -hmm. um, and so if they go around twice. Uh, the eyes right past the queen as their little salute. Yeah. And then that that's that's more or less, if, yeah. in a nutshell, how it works. We also have the mass band here. Now the mass band are a uh, you know they, they are fighting troops. These are these are not sort of uh, renter renter fiddlers, yeah. you know, or uh, renter tuba. Mm -hmm. It's it, they're genuine fighting soldiers, part of mm -hmm. the British Army, and uh, trained both extremely hard mm -hmm. with their instruments and then also with um, with uh, as fighting troops. Yeah. So they will be on parade. They're mm -hmm. an amazing band. It's quite you heard, we heard them earlier. Yeah. About mm -hmm. It's quite something being it that really close is. to them. Yeah. Uh, I love a good march. Who, does, who doesn't? Okay. Uh, and so, so yeah. So that, that, that's kind of a, a, a summary of, mm -hmm. of where we're at at the moment. Okay. And so, where are we right now in the actual parade route? Where does it begin? Where does this lie within that progression? And then, does it end back at Buckingham Palace? So, wherever this so is in is in Horse Guards Parade, where we stand right now. Well, I mean, just an overview of the uh, overall parade route. Right. So yeah. this is a absolute. This is this this is sort of um, where everything kind of takes place. This is, this is the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. So you have Horse Guards Parade here. Mm -hmm. As you can see, just over here is the Mall. The okay. Mall is 1,160 paces long, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, important only because the army tend to march at 116 paces a minute. Okay. So the idea is that the Mall should take exactly 10 minutes to march down. <laughs> And it's also, I should say that you might will notice when we go on to the, the mouth's red and the, mm -hmm. the, the reason the mouth is red is kind of, it's sort of an oxidized iron mm -hmm. uh, process that basically is meant to resemble a red carpet. Okay. So uh, up the mouth is uh, going to be crowds on, all, on both sides, mm -hmm. plus uh, other, other, well, other guardsmen who are not part of the parade, who are just, who are, uh, yeah, who are just mm -hmm. marking the, the mouth. Um, and then there's the Victoria Memorial in the mm -hmm. middle. Um, where the troops are marched and then there's Buckingham Palace. Now, Buckingham Palace, obviously, the nation's home, home of the Queen, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, where she will be coming out of with members of the royal family and senior members of the British Army, and uh, they will be on horseback riding uh, up the Mall uh, to the parade here. So they'll come up here. They will take their positions up by the stand that will be over there. Mm -hmm. Then the Queen will inspect the troops. So the Queen will get back on her carriage and she will go and inspect the troops. Uh, she has a very keen eye. She's done this for a very, very long time. 70 years. And yes. Uh, and, Plus that, um, you know. uh, there are There are, of course, reports and stories of, of her being quite keen-eyed on certain details that people uh, need to reflect on <laughs> after a parade. <laughs> okay. So um, uh, everyone wants to avoid that because mm -hmm. everyone wants to impress the Queen. Yes. Um, so she then takes a place 
uh, back up uh, at uh, 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 her seat, and then the the, the parade starts in mm -hmm. in Rio, which is it starts with the the mass bands mm -hmm. who do a, who do a march and uh, so are the the regiments waiting for her to arrive. So they're stationed here because we we were just at. And what was it? Uh, Wellington, Barracks, Wellington Barracks, right? And so that's where they're practicing. But that's where they would stage, right? And then they would march here, be all yeah. set out, right? Yeah. The queen would arrive, yeah. inspect them, yeah. And then the actual march is in effect beginning here, back to Buckingham Palace. That's exactly right. Okay. So they will all be formed up here well in advance of the arrival of the queen. Uh, both the uh, the. Um, the, the, the guardsmen and also the field officer and brigade waiting in the mass bands. So they'll be here waiting to give the words of command. Mm -hmm. There's there's some quite nifty drill movements to open up the space for the royal family to okay. arrive in through. Um, then that gets closed up here, and um, then then yeah, and it starts in actuality. And yeah. so um, we'll have the escort uh, for the colour mm -hmm. will be on the right hand side. Now mm -hmm. traditionally, the uh, the right-hand side of any formation of British Army is a grenadier um, company, okay. which is why, regardless of the regiment, whether they're grenadier guards, Colston guards, Irish guards, Welsh guards, uh, Scots guards, they will march uh, to the. It's a grenadier's march that they march to mm -hmm. to come along here, mm -hmm. and then they march to the middle there, where there will be their colour waiting for them. Okay. And the regimental sergeant major will take the colour. Mm -hmm. Pass it over to the ensign. The ensign tends to be the youngest subaltern, the youngest officer uh, of the regiment at that given time. It's a great honour to be because he will flourish the colour, and I'll come to that in a bit. Mm. Um, the escort then becomes the escort to the colour uh, because it now has uh, possession of the colour. It will then, in slow time, follow the route of the troops, which is a sort of L shape mm -hmm. along here. And that's, that's the ceremony. The, 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 that's then the colour is troops and then the march by happen. Yeah, wow. And so the Queen, uh, you know, traditionally on horseback or now in the carriage, would process with the troops to Buckingham Palace. Yes. Right? They would go up to the balcony, of course, we've, which we've all seen on television. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess there's a flyover. Right? Yeah, that's the troops here. continue to so, march past. Yeah, so she'll she'll go by. She'll have the household cavalry nice and close to her because they're her bodyguard, um, and uh, also the uh, in front of her, lots and lots of guardsmen, nice bearskins marching perfectly mm -hmm. in time uh, to the mass band's music, and uh, all the way out the mouth. Uh, a couple of minutes wait for her to kind of shake off the part of the plane trees and yeah. uh, maybe the dust, and um, say Make a big thank you to the, the field officer and brigade waiting who probably did a terrific job, mm -hmm. um, as the great Colonel Piers Ashfield did in 2019. Yes, 2019. Uh, he did a wonderful job. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, then she'll come out on the balcony and everybody waves and wishes her a happy birthday. Yes. God, brilliant. It's a great thing. Yeah, well, I mean, again, the tradition um, is second to none. I mean, I think that it's been going on for hundreds of years, yeah. right? And still at its same level of excellence. Yeah. That's so much of what I love about Britain uh, is that you know these traditions have gone uninterrupted for such a long time. They're still honored, uh, they're still respected. Yeah. In many ways, they're still uh, cherished. And yeah. so it's so much of British culture that it's great to see them continue on strongly. Absolutely, I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head there in the fact that it's part of the culture. It's part of the sort of soul of our, just our, our kind of our way, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's who we are. And it's, big, it's a big part of that, just that, you know, because yes, it's kind of eccentric. And yes, it's antiquated. I mean, it has you know, it, it has no uh, uh, military purpose. No military really, purpose. outside of ceremony. Outside of ceremony, but mm. I mean, I mean, well, I will say that they would argue that obviously the the discipline mm -hmm. and self administration and uh, and uh, teamwork required yeah. to pull off something like this does pay off important. in the field. Yeah. Uh, but but in theory, mm -hmm. you, you you know what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. And. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, 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 it's an amazing thing. It's quite unusual, I think, to the rest of the world. I, I've seen all over YouTube, I've seen people who are doing sort of reaction videos to, to and they, they, there's, they have no clue, and why would they? Yeah. Because it does feel unusual, and yet at the same time when I watch it, 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 couldn't, it couldn't be more British, it couldn't be some, something that's so much a part of who yeah. I am as a person and, yeah. and, and, and who every kind of yeah. Brit is too. Is there anything else you look forward to as much as this? I mean, this is, I mean, kind of a, a penultimate a military and certainly um, kind of royal ceremony right, yeah. that's involved with the Queen. 
Anything else on this level that you think? Um... Good question. I mean, this is certainly the biggest of them. If you want to see any more um, sort of uh, state pageantry mm -hmm. of that sense, is the opening of Parliament. Yes, which just occurred. Which just occurred. Um, that... Prince Charles was standing in for the Queen. Yes, did yes. So, so mm -hmm. he did brilliantly. But a let's pair of boots that Gatian and Girling refurbished. That was very <laughs> clever. That I thought that was bloody good. I thought they did an amazing job with that. Uh, but uh, we obviously. Uh, hope that the, it doesn't indicate anything too bad yes, with, yeah. with regards to the Queen. Um, the uh, yes, but that comes and goes fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. As a as as a, if you want to see everyone out on the yeah, and with that, I mean, you see, you know, uh, you know, uh, the Queen, or in this case, uh, Charles, um, processing in carriage from Buckingham Palace yeah. to Parliament. Yes, right. Uh, but then, aside from that, everything's really behind closed doors. More you know, or less. The rest of it, I mean, you can see it on television. I, you, I mean, you could see changing the guards, of course, if you want, if you, you know, but, and... and well, that uh, occurs weekly. I think right? it's, I think it's two or three times a week. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it's, um, that's over at Buckingham Palace. Um, but there's the, the, the Ceremony of the Keys mm -hmm. at uh, uh, the Tower of London, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really interesting one. Because that's 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 that, that's proper ancient. Okay. That's like very old. The <laughs> yeah. Ceremony of the Keys. It's medieval. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, 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 way before that. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, 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 the Ceremony is very old. Um, and but and, and also the change of guard happens here as well. There's actually every day there's a four o'clock inspection. Okay. Um, so at three thirty, you'll see a young subaltern on a horseback from the lifeguards of the Blues and Royals, looking very impressive, trotting over and he'll inspect the troops who are going to be guarding there. Because in theory, this gate here is the official entrance to Buckingham Palace and St. James's Palace. Okay. So we're currently in Buckingham Palace, in okay. theory. So this theory. would have been, you know, the original entrance where people would have come in to Buckingham Palace. Yes. Right. That's it, that's it. So, so, that's, where they, so that's why the guards are there. Mm. One time, Queen Victoria came back and there was no guard on duty. Really? So she punished them to 100 years of, it, of daily inspection. <laughs> um, the 100 years have obviously since elapsed, but they've kept with it um, uh, to amazing. keep the tradition going. <laughs> because back then, I mean, you really did have to worry of, you know, something yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I was... Um... Well, lots of people tried to kill Queen Victoria. Everyone's after Queen Victoria. Um, she, she, so many people tried to kill her. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're right. But just the carriage ride, I mean, someone was telling me the carriage ride from you know, like St. James's Palace to uh, Kensington Palace. I mean, you were in the proper country and you had to worry about you know, bandits robbers and, and bandits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, which, you know, yeah. seems so absurd, but that's why, you know, they would have these caravans of carriages that would kind of all, for, you know, kind of all caravan down together. And it was to, um, you know, for their own self-protection. Yep, absolutely. Ah, I love Britain. It's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tom. Aren't we lucky? You know, thank you so much. I've learned uh, so much uh, on this tour. And, you know, we get to see the household guards practicing. Um, here we are, you know, at Horse Guards. And, uh, you know, congratulations, I guess, you know, for the yeah. Queen's Nice day for it. Hopefully, hopefully the weather sticks something like this. Yeah. You don't want everybody fainting. Well, you remembered your umbrella, which is I did. why this we is didn't my, have rain. Well, I forgot mine. This mine, is but... my, uh, funny enough, all of this is my sort of homage to kind of guardsmen off duty dress. Because there was a time where if you were a young guards officer, you were expected to wear a sort of double-breasted sort of mm -hmm. navy suit, mm -hmm. pinch right perhaps, and you walk around with a bowler hat and umbrella. My bowler hat is, is, is not around, but I do have my, <laughs> this is my brig umbrella, and the, the kind of notch in here, uh, so you can see it's two separated mm -hmm. pieces of wood. The whole point with that was so the, uh, the kind of young guards officers can have a very, very tightly furled umbrella that kind of substitutes as a sword, if you yeah. will, as they walked around. Look extra quick. smart. And look extra smart. And they did, they look absolutely gleamy. So mm. uh, if you see a picture of Prince Philip uh, at Ascot or with, wherever with an umbrella, mm -hmm. he's got one of these with the separated handle yeah. from the rest of the stick. Yeah. Um, so, um, delightful to be here, yeah. Kirby. Well, thank Tom, you for asking me. Thank you so much. We're gonna have to do this again. again you know, maybe and some again of these other again. ceremonies. <laughs> Every single time I'm with you, I learned so much about London. Oh, good. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I'm sad that I won't be here personally for the Trooping of the Color, but I will be watching. Good, excellent, <laughs> quite right. This time informed. I expect to say. Perfect. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.